Next, our valedictorian, Mr. Rocco Barbuska. Rocco is the son of Chrissy and Tony Barbuska. He's attended ACS for five years. After graduation, Rocco plans to attend the University of Florida, go Gators, to major in international relations. He's received over $748,000 in scholarship money, including the South Carolina Palmetto Fellows Scholarship and various awards from at least six different colleges that he's applied to. During his time at ACS, Rocco has participated in Beta Club and Student Council, serving as a student body president during his senior year. And an amazing job he did. Rocco has played varsity basketball and was a member of the 2021 state championship squad, cross country as a state individual champion, and varsity soccer. Rocco has led the chapel band at ACS on keyboard, and he's also been a part of the ACS drama program, most recently as the beige crayon. Rocco seeks to use his multiple talents to glorify God, and we can't wait to see how God uses him to forward his kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rocco Barbuska. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Zachary. I'm not good at introductions. Those were the first encounter I had with any of my classmates when I came to ACS in eighth grade during back to school night. Well, at the time, I thought Zach had come to say hi to me out of his own goodwill. I later learned that his mom had forced him to go talk to the new kid. <laughs> Including this awkward first greeting, that night would mark the beginning of many others first, not just for me, but for our entire class as we journeyed together through high school to the seats we occupy now. Together, we would have our first experience with learning a dead language in Mr. Place's Latin class. Some of us would have our first experiences on varsity sports. We'd be introduced to imaginary and fake numbers with Ms. Dial in pre-algebra. Some, like Luigi, would have our first encounter with the American school system. Along with these firsts would come just as many endings. Just as there was a beginning to our studies in Latin, there would be a bittersweet end with Mr. Place retiring. We would say goodbye to many of our classmates through 8th, 9th, and 10th grade, even as new classmates came. During senior year and graduation, the cycle of beginnings and endings has continued at an accelerated pace. We have begun to transition from our last year of high school into whatever we have planned next. At the beginning of the year, our first day also became an ending as our last first day of school. Each beginning game in a new sports season became the last season open we'd play in. There's something quite profound and powerful about the beginning of new things and the ending of old times. In scripture, several beginnings and endings frame God's plan of redemption. In Genesis 1-1, the starting point of creation and time is made clear with this statement in the beginning. And during the climax of all human events, Jesus' crucifixion, God restored his creation with the final triumphant words, it is finished. The clear boundary between the time for the new to begin and the time for something to, see, to end seems odd to us as humans. Yet in Ecclesiastes 3.1, God shows the importance of everything beginning and ending in its own time. When Solomon writes, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. While the passage goes on to outline times of sadness and times of joy, today I implore you to not see graduation as just a beginning or ending, but rather as a shifting from one good thing to the next good thing. Today, all that has gone before has prepared us for a new and exciting beginning. As a class, we've grown close together, maybe even too close. We know each other's quirks, like Kyle's tendency to walk like a T-Rex when he wants to go fix something, <laughs> or Carson's affinity for writing multilingual plays that we can't understand, or MK's spontaneous impulse buying and MJ's extremely loud snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Still, there's a time for everything and our time to share hallways and classrooms is coming to an end. Though we have enjoyed each other's constant company, a new exciting beginning awaits us. Whether this, this, this new beginning holds full-time work weeks or life with dining halls and roommates, it is certainly nothing to go into anxiously. While time and high school together may be coming to a close, it has prepared us for challenges and new ground ahead. Little things like our late nights watching weird movies during the senior retreat and missions trip, running suicides till we throw up with Coach Corey in basketball practice, or sharing the ox court on long drives has taught us how to adapt to different and even uncomfortable situations. College and the workforce will certainly present challenges, so we must adapt to irregular schedules and non-home cooked meals. But together, we have prepared for it. But enough about challenges and obstacles. The beginning of our adventure in the real world holds more than just difficulties and struggles. What God has ahead for each one of us should bring us excitement. And as I stated earlier, let's see this time of transition not of one from ease to hardship or carefree fun to hard work, but as a transition to the next part of God's great plan. 
New experiences and opportunities such as studying abroad or joining a sports team or living on our own are now available to us, but only if we're willing to seize our new endeavors with confidence. Whether these opportunities come as friendships, internships, or so service projects, it is up to us to seize them while they arise. We must be willing to take the initiative and say, hi, my name is Zachary. I'm not good at introductions. <laughs> Lastly, although high school may be ending for us, it would be negligent not to thank the people who have shaped and guided us to this point. Teachers, thank you for giving us a stellar educational grounding, but also, more importantly, a spiritual grounding. Thank you, Mr. Place, who I don't know if he's here today, but if he was, I'd like to thank him for teaching us the importance of having God at the center of our lives and reminding us not to make God burn our, down our barn. Thank you to Mrs. Dial for the long equations and for throwing foam monkeys at us. Thank you to Mr. Routine for pushing us to always chase that mythical sacred cheese of life. Lastly, but certainly not least, thank you, Ms. Kelly, for everything. The school couldn't operate without all the love you pour into each student. You've, clear, you've truly shown us what selfless love looks like. And, well, also not lastly. Personally, I'd like to thank all of my classmates that I've shared to my ACS experience with. Whether they're here today or not, it's been one heck of a ride with all of you, and I want you to know you're the reason I'm here today. And most importantly, thank you, Mom, for being my biggest supporter and critic. I love you even if my new beginning is taking me states away from you. Dr. Seuss once said in a very powerful and overused quote, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. This rings most true during graduation. High school has come to an end, but it happened, and it happened together, and that is a cause for joy. As we continue this ceremony, I'd like to leave you with that same Dr. Seuss quote, but tweaked slightly. Don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened, and laugh for what is yet to come. Thank you. Thank you, Rocco. You can see we're going to miss this senior class. They're a special class of students. Oh, at this point, I'd like to introduce.